Welcome to The Cynical Developer, the podcast that helps you to improve your development knowledge and career through explaining the latest and greatest in development technology and providing you with what you need to succeed as a developer. In this episode, we'll be discussing working hours. Are you working too many or not enough? How many hours should you be working? It's a difficult question and uh, really depends on what you're actually talking about. Are you talking about just your day job or your day job and your side hustles? Your side hustles, your day job and your hobbies and your work and family life because it, it all takes time. You know, we need time to, to do all of these things. So for argument's sake, we're going to start off. Let's talk about uh, just your day job. Now, your working contract will often stipulate what your working hours are be that core hours with flexi times or set static hours like 9 till 5 or 9 till 6 or 8 till 5, whatever. So you go and take a look at that and uh, you see that your contract is the 30, 40, 50 or 60 hour weeks, whatever it is. There are two concerns that developers come up against with their working hours. The first one being that they feel they aren't doing enough in the allocated time they're, they've got their nine to five slot, but they're just not getting enough done, or in their opinion, not getting enough done. And secondly, they're being forced by the employer to work extra hours over and above what are in the uh, contract and what's really needed. So let's look firstly at your feelings of not doing enough. We all get it, especially when you start a new job or you're working on something really complex and you hit obstacle after obstacle and nothing seems to be going right. It's all pretty normal, but what can happen is you start to put in more and more of your personal time into solving the problem or completing the task. Now, I'm an advocate for going above and beyond and putting in the extra hours when they're needed, but when it starts to affect those around you, that's when you need to stop and take a hard look at what you're doing. A couple of nights every now and again isn't that bad, but you don't want to be putting in extra hours every night just to get stuff done and get the minimal done. You might feel that you're winning when uh, when you do this, and your boss might not realise that you're putting in five hours extra every night and therefore doesn't know that there's a problem. And this problem can cause bigger problems for you because your line manager will continually overestimate your capacity and they'll continue to push you by giving you a little bit more work and a little bit more and a little bit more to the point where you're putting in all your spare time just to complete the work that you've been being given. It's a bad situation to be in and it's going to do very little except for negatively affect your health and down that road of overworking, it's dark, lonely, scary and dangerous and trust me, I've been down that road several times, a couple of times only just turned back before I found that uh, the road suddenly stops and drops off into like a bottomless pit, it's really not a good place to be. As I've said, putting in extra hours is fine, for example if you know that if you give it another two hours tonight you could complete the project and get it deployed tomorrow, great, do that. You know, get it done, get it out there. That's a couple of brownie points. You know, if you have the spare time available, then do it. Or if you know that you slacked off maybe for an hour, you know, you took an extra an hour at lunch or you, you messed around on Facebook or the internet somewhere and you should have been getting stuff done, then work that hour back in your own time if you can. You know, just don't make a habit of doing either of those. So, Don't slack off all the time and don't put in the extra hours if you don't really need to. As for your employer forcing you to work extra hours, it's something I really hate and I've been there. I've worked one place that I was expected to be in 30 minutes before uh, my start time as a developer and if we left anything less than 45 minutes after our clock out time, we were dragged in the office and asked why we've been clock watching the idiots obviously didn't understand time management and all that but anyway if your employer is constantly making you work extra hours you need to find out why is it because they're just dicks is it 
that the team isn't big enough? Or are they overcommitting their resources to the clients? It's worth sitting down with with your line manager or with your boss and airing your concerns, and they'll hopefully work through it and sort it out. If you can't talk to them or they won't change the situation, they're really forcing your hand. And uh, that's because the road that I spoke about before does still lie ahead of you if you don't do something about this. So it leaves you with one option. And I've said this before, mainly because uh, I love the phrase and uh, I think it's one to live by, which is uh, if you can't change your job, then change your job. What I mean by this is if you can't sort out the problems at your current place of work, then get a new job. There are plenty out there and don't be scared of moving jobs. It's not that terrifying. So working too much at your day job will lead you to that dark road. And it's always waiting for you, waiting to trip you up, no matter what you do. Hobbies, family life, side hustles on top of your working hours of your day job. It's the same problem. It's just as risky. Um, Over committing yourself is a big problem as well. And over committing myself is something I'm very, very good at. And I'll I'll go over a list of uh, what I'm currently committed to at the recording of this podcast, just to give you an idea of uh, of the things that I should be doing. So obviously this podcast, arranging the interviews, uh, writing the episodes where it's just me like this talking, recording them, editing them, writing blog posts for the podcast, organising blog posts from guests. Uh, I've got a tropical fish website specialising in a specific genus of fish, andinoacara.com writing articles for that website, writing articles for other websites and resources. Um, I'm on the committee for the British Cichlid Association, the BCA, so I help run their events. Um, I help with setting up and uh, running their committee meetings. Uh, I maintain the BCA website, forum, Facebook group, the Facebook sales group. I'm administrator of one of the largest tropical fish Facebook groups. Uh, Tropical Fish Keeping UK, we've got about 35,000 members, something like 28,000, 29,000 active members. Uh, I run my own tropical fish house at home, um, and that takes up tasks like cleaning tanks, feeding adult fish, raising fry, moving tanks around. Uh, I play airsoft, and I play airsoft with a team, so I've got attending training events, uh, away games, Uh, I also attend a local developer group called Chester Devs. Uh, Looking after and raising a set of two-year-old twins, that's a big job. Having a full-time job as a developer. Uh, Trying to go out and and do runs to get in shape and also to compete in races. General exercise to improve my health. And finally, somewhere I need to make time for friends and family as well. I've probably missed something off. Um... That is a lot of commitments, and we all only have 24 hours in a day. I'm not going to dive into how to make time for all these things. Uh, I think there's another show in that, but some of these things, they have to take a back seat from time to time. I've missed a couple of uh, Chester Devs and Airsoft events because of family commitments, but how I work out what I miss and what I don't, I have to prioritise it, and that list's got a bit of a priority to it. And I try to make sure that certain things get done always. There isn't any any wavering there. So making time for family and friends, making time for exercise, um, and my full-time job, because I get paid to do that, um, and uh, and get out and run. You know, they're, they're top of my priority for everything. And then, of course, there's after that, it's you guys out there listening. I've got to make sure that my podcasts are, uh, are done and, and out every Monday for you. Prioritising your commitments will help. It'll stop you from overcommitting. It will stop you from working too many hours. So those things that you don't really enjoy and you have no real benefit from them, you're not getting any real worth out of it, stop doing them. Stop watching 30 hours of TV every week or whatever it is that you do. Do something more productive. Do something that's on your commitments list. Now, I am busy. And I have to fill up my time. I don't do downtime and 
want to do I feel lost um, I think that's the only way to describe it I get itchy feet and need to be out there doing something and it's a fine line between between being busy and running yourself into the ground so please do be careful and don't overwork yourself do what you enjoy. If you feel you're working too many hours, cut the hours back. Drop something that isn't important. Get a better job. We all pivot and shift on what we want and what we need. And sometimes a change is as good as a rest. So hopefully this is giving you a little bit of uh, food for thought over uh, the hours that you are working. And until next time, So until next time, thanks for listening to The Cynical Developer. I'm James Studdart, and this episode was Working Hours. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review on your favourite podcast platform and help The Cynical Developer to grow by increasing its audience. If you have any questions about this or any other episode, then drop us an email, a tweet, or leave a comment on the website where you can find all the resource links and show notes for each episode. 